Hello again. Uh, before we get into today's video quick tip, I just wanted to share a little bit of feedback that I got recently from a viewer named Jordan. Uh, Jordan writes in, he says, this is completely not a joke and in no way trying to be rude, but why does it seem every video here is just your face on the screen? I mean, don't get me wrong, you're a handsome dude, but wouldn't maybe having a DAW session or something, at least a mixer or some plugins, make a lot more sense than just your face talking into the camera? It's honestly a little weird for a music production blog and has turned me off from your tutorials, as I have no uh, desire to stare at your face while you explain mixing tips. Again, this can be taken in a rude way, but isn't intended to be so. I'm just honestly not sure why you need to have your face filmed for music production tips makes any sense in the universe. Like, one or two videos is alright, but all of them? Come on, man. So today's video quick tip, I'm going to be experimenting with a new format based on Jordan's feedback, and I hope you like it. Here we go. Des Asante here from the Tech Muse Academy with another MixLessons.com video quick tip. Uh, this one comes again from the Gearsluts forums. Um, member asks, I've never used 96 kilohertz. Should I? I typically use... 44.1? Well, it's a good question, and I think um, it's one that deserves a little explanation. So I guess today what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about what sample rate is, uh, which is what uh, he's referring to here, and what bit depth is, and how you should uh, consider them both when you're uh, setting up your project. So first of all, let's start with an explanation. What the sample rate actually is, is um, it's the amount of snapshots of audio when you're recording that are being captured per second. So 44.1 is 44,100 um, samples or snapshots of audio per second. So it would stand to reason then that 96,000 snapshots per second would probably be a higher quality, higher resolution audio. And you wouldn't be wrong in that assumption. Um, the other thing to consider is your bit depth. Um, your bit depth is in each one of those samples, how many numbers are representing the waveform at that point in time. So for example, a 16-bit audio file, 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz means you're getting um, 16 digits of information captured per sample and you're getting 44,100 of them captured per second. So I hope that's clear. Um, so it, it, conversely, if we were to record at 24-bit 96K, we're getting a lot more information. In other words, the file sizes are going to be much larger, bulkier, and a little more cumbersome for the computer to deal with. Um, at 24-bit, at you're getting 24 ones and zeros that represent every single sample, and you're getting 96,000 of those uh, samples per second. So obviously a much higher audio resolution. Now, in my experience, the bit depth is a much more obvious uh, and perceivable adjustment. So if you were to record at 16-bit, what would happen is, uh, by the way, 16-bit 44.1 is the CD standard for audio. Um, so, so some people will say, well, if that's what the CD is anyway, then why, why work at anything higher? And there's a couple of reasons for it, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, so if you're recording at 16-bit, one of the things that happens is with only 16 bits representing every sample, um, you lose, in comparison to a higher bit depth, you lose um, dynamic range. So, so from the loudest signal possible to the softest signal possible. And this will represent itself in things like, um, uh, for example, if you were to put on a good set of headphones, listen at a nice volume, and listen to um, like a hand clap with some reverb on it, you'll be able to hear that at a certain point in time, that reverb uh, as it's getting softer and softer and fading out at the tail of the reverb, at a certain point in time, it will just truncate and there won't be any bits left to 
to represent the audio getting softer than that. Um, and this is something you can actually hear. You can experiment with this in your own uh, uh, digital workstations at home. Um, just record something with just a simple short transient like a hand clap or something, a snare shot or what have you. And, um, and then apply some reverb working at 16-bit and have a listen very, very carefully <clears throat> and see if you can hear that reverb fade all the way to silence. Now, when you go to 24-bit, there's more, there's more numbers, there's more data to represent more of that signal. So you'll be able to hear that uh, reverb tail fade right to silence, at least uh, perceivably so. I'm sure in, in the world of mathematics, there's still some truncation going on, I imagine, but you won't be able to hear it. So I always recommend working at the highest bit depth possible and and when you're uh, when you're considering sample rate, but and by the way, the higher bit depth is not that much more taxing on your computer. But when you are working at a high sample rate, like 96k or 192, as some systems are capable of, um, then that's something that definitely adds a load to your computer's processing power. So uh, my my normal recommendation is is to work at the highest bit depth you're able to work at. And, and I normally work at 44.1 or 48 if my audio is going to DVD because the DVD standard is 48 kilohertz or 48,000 samples per second, okay? Now, the sample rate increase is not as noticeable. Now, I'm probably going to get a little flack when I say this because I think that uh, some people are, are really into getting the, the most quality and resolution out of their systems as is, you know, technologically possible and, and certainly nothing wrong with that approach. But in my experience, I found that the high sample rates tend to be very hard on the computer. I tend to have limitations to my system resources. I'm not able to work as freely as I would otherwise. Um, and it's also not as noticeable an improvement in the sound uh, quality of the file. It's an improvement, that's for sure, and the math will tell you that, but it's not as noticeable. So my recommendation, work at the highest bit depth possible, and then work at the sample rate that your, des that your, uh, your end product is going to be destined for. So if it's for CD, you know, 44.1, uh, 16, excuse me, not 16 bit, but uh, work at your high bit depth, but 44.1 for your sample rate. When you do get to the end of your mix and you're about to bounce down uh, uh, an export, uh, the full mix, the final mix, and it's going to be destined for CD, make sure you use a dither plugin at the end of your signal chain on your two mix to um, to add some uh, low level noise to the signal to avoid um, to avoid the issues that come with sample rate uh, conversion or bit depth conversion as well. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it's not too confusing. It is a bit of a science. And uh, if you have questions, by all means, leave comments below the video, and we'll see you on the next quick tip. Okay, so I was being a little bit silly there, and Jordan, listen, I appreciate your feedback, and I appreciate you being a good sport. Um, in, in, to give you a proper response to your uh, to your feedback, I uh, I treat these videos as sort of a conversation with folks that are interested, and so I chose to do this format because uh, it is just that it's me having a conversation with you about the topics that we love to talk about. If indeed I have something to show on the screen, if I'm going to give a demonstration of a technique or something of that nature then uh, of course uh, that's exactly what I'll do I'll show the screen but uh, I do like to keep these these conversations as uh, as that an informal conversation about audio so once again I appreciate the feedback anyone has anything that they'd like to share with me by all means let me know techmusepodcast at gmail.com is a simple and easy way to get me or just leave me a comment anywhere I'm found on the internet and I'll be sure to uh, to respond to you and once again like I said earlier we will see you on the next quick tip.